Hello everyone. I am making this video today because I'm still seeing a lot of speculation and questions are being asked uh, regarding whether or not Chris was able to put the girls in the top hatches at the oil wells. And I know it's a difficult subject matter, but I'm still seeing a lot of these videos being made and, and questions are being asked of me and I just hope I can shed some light on how it was indeed possible and it's not just speculation. I will give you the reasons why this was possible and that he did not put them in or especially Bella because she was bigger from the bottom in the main way cover. Okay? I know it's a difficult, difficult topic matter, but I will try to to be respectful. I know when I first heard about the opening being eight inches wide, I too thought, wow, how is that even possible for him to have put especially Bella into a little eight inch hatch? Well, I will tell you why. Now I do believe that he did do that. First off, when I, when I first heard about it, I thought, wow, that's impossible. And then I started thinking, wow, you know, the contortionist, and I thought of the guy that I had seen before that he puts his entire body through a tennis racket and he can contort his body and the contortion artists are able to do that. They're just flexible and able to do that. If you don't know what a contortionist is, they are someone with the skills of extreme flexible flexibility. Um, they are in acts like acrobatics, circus acts, street performers, other live performing arts. They are typically performed in front of live audiences. And the act will showcase one or more artists performing a choreographed set of moves or poses, often to music, which require extreme flexibility. The physical flexibility required to perform such acts greatly exceeds that of the general population. They do dramatic feats of seemingly inhuman flexibility that captivate audiences. Okay, so I know you've all have probably seen these sideshow acts, circus acts, where they bend down and some of them can even go into like little boxes, like get their body into like really extremely small spaces. A couple of guys I've seen do the tennis racket thing. So if an adult man can get into a tennis racket with his entire body, shoulders, it's very possible and probable that Chris did this with Bella after she had passed away. Now, another reason why, besides the, the contortionist, I just wanted to bring that up, that, you know, grown adults get their bodies into these positions without breaking their bones. Okay, and then the next thing. There are changes that occur in our bodies after death. Some of the changes in the body following death are changes in the muscle, complete relaxation of the muscular system. It is contractile for three to six hours after death and later rigidity sets in. Stages of the entire muscular tissue after death. Primary flaccidity or post-mortem muscular irritability. Then post-mortem rigidity or cadaveric rigidity or death stiffening or death struggle of the muscle or rigor mortis. Okay, so then we have the other early changes. What the um, changes in the muscles are called with the three to six hour time frame right after death is called primary flaccidity. It's the complete loss of tone. The muscles may still be reactive for hours. Pale skin, conjunctivitis, red eyes. Face may be remain blue or red your hair can continue to grow that's weird and then you have the loss of sphincter action past urine semen regurgitation of food body stiffness first you have the moment of death 
primary plasticity, which that's the complete loss of the muscle. Your muscles are just completely relaxed. Okay. So that primary plasticity starts immediately after death and then lasts three to six hours. All the muscles will relax. Your lower jaw begins to fall. Eyelids lose tension. Your joints are flexible. Remember that your joints are flexible and your muscles are relaxed. It will last from three to six hours after death before the stiffening occurs. Okay. Then stiffening is what they refer to as the rigor mortis. So that wouldn't start until after the three to six hour time frame. So if he did indeed kill them at the oil wells, then the primary plasticity would apply and the muscles would be completely relaxed and the joints, the, the joints, not only the muscles, but the joints are flexible. So yes, indeed, he could have put them, put her in the eight inch hole with her arms over her head. So that's going to bring her shoulders in closer. And just think that the joints are all really more flexible than if you were alive. You can maneuver a body much more easily because it's not going to hurt them. And then the joints and the muscles are relaxed, much more relaxed than when you're alive. And then the last major thing, and all I have to say is if you were around in the eighties in the late eighties, you will remember this. By two words. Baby Jessica. Okay, for those who weren't around in the late 80s and remember the baby Jessica story. It was about a little 18-month-old baby who fell into an abandoned well in her aunt's backyard in 1987. And it was, everyone was glued to their televisions, you know, waiting to see when this little baby's going to get, if she's going to be alive, if they're going to be able to get her out. She was in there for like 57 hours, I believe it was. And they did eventually pull her out. And when they did, she had no broken bones. The, the, the well pipe was eight inches around. She'd went down 22 feet an eight inch hole tube, an eight inch tube, just a pipe. So see when Bella went through, it was just the hatch opening hole was eight inches and just went down. Now this baby Jessica, granted she was a little younger than, than Bella, but she went completely 22 foot down an eight inch pipe and had no broken bones and still lived. And all that she had was like a she ended up with a scar. She had a scraped forehead. And the way that she fell down in the pipe, one of her legs was kind of above the rest of her. And the way it was in there, she got gangrene on one of her feet from it being injured. And I think she had to have a toe amputated. But she had no broken bones at all. And she went completely down the 8-inch tube. She was flexible enough to do that. 22 foot down. It was an amazing story. But that hit me that the baby Jessica story and how she fit through that tube and she went all the way down it and had no broken bones. So I hope this might change the minds. Oh, and I want to bring up the fact that the Manway cover, I'll put up some pictures here that there are so many bolts on those things like um I think the professional that was on Ashley Banfield said like 60 some bolts on there but I'll show you pictures of the the one from Servi and then just so you show you some examples of others but all of those manways have like at least 50 like bolts on them and if you're using an impact wrench unless you've got the one like even the NASCAR guys use the one with the hose where I mean I don't know where he's going to get one that has a hose I know the ones that are handheld that are cordless. I don't know if that would be powerful enough to do that many bolts without going dead. And just think how long that would take. The guy, the professional, the professor said it would take an hour. But um, I do believe that he did put her in at the top just because of the fact that 
your muscles, and your joints relax after death, and that would make her more maneuverable. I know it's a very tough subject, but I just wanted to get that out there and hopefully stop some speculation on that fact. And the fact that it would take a lot of time to get those covers off with those 60, at least 60 bolts on there. And I don't think he could do it with just a cordless impact wrench. So I hope maybe I made some sense today in pointing these things out. I hope it helps someone and maybe changes the minds and then you can see how that, that would be possible without breaking any bones and how he could have got her in there because she would be more flexible. And if you want more information about baby Jessica, her name is, you can Google um, baby Jessica McClure. It happened in Midland, Texas in 1987. Thanks for watching. Bye.